Hey, thanks so much, Reverend Temple. It's so great to be back with you. I've always just loved uh, First Unity and your whole energy has been really inspiring so far this morning. I'm so glad I came. Um, what I want to talk about today is a very related topic. I want to talk about our base chakra, your first chakra. You're essentially sitting on it right now. It's right at the uh, base of your spine. And our first chakra is fairly uh, discombobulated would be the technical term I would use. It's, uh, it's not super happy. I'm sure you've noticed it started back in March. I think back to March, you guys, um, when all of a sudden from, from one country to another, uh, you know, maybe we first noticed it in China and then we picked up on it in Italy. And then the next thing we knew it was in New York City and then Seattle. And uh, I'm sure you had that, oh, no feeling right? Um, as your base chakra pulled up inside of you. So it doesn't matter whether it's stemming from back then uh, with the beginning of a global pandemic or more recently in the last few weeks, this uh, racial injustice that is so pervasive and, and so disturbing to us all, uh, or personal challenges that maybe you're experiencing, maybe you personally have a health problem or you personally are dealing with uh, financial issues. Uh, for one reason or another, everybody on the planet has a base chakra issue pretty much today. Um, when I first noticed it back in March, uh, I never have trouble sleeping and all of a sudden, I wouldn't say I was having trouble sleeping, but I had the most uh, uh, unbelievable dreams and they were disturbing, not nightmares, more real than that, <laughs> more like daymares, you know. And I asked around, I asked my student body, how many people were experiencing this? And I would see all these hands go up in the air. So what we were feeling were one another. So it's not just your base chakra that went, ah, we may not survive this, this is scary, but everybody on the planet pretty much at the same time over a matter of weeks, went into the same state of fear. Um, the interesting thing is Mother Earth has a base chakra too. I'll talk about that more in just a minute. So we're not only feeling each other, millions of us, but we're also feeling her and um, her chakra. So fear seeps into our energy system. You're sitting inside your own bubble of energy right now. Think of it as a beautiful, you hope, iridescent bubble of light and color that's constantly dynamically moving a little, not, not, um, not stayed or locked in place because then the colors get kind of muddy and brown. You want it open and vibrant and just like you saw with these, this, with these amazing uh, music team here. You know, they're all just, you can see, just full of light and you, you can see their energy all moving just like those ribbons of light demonstrate, the, uh, so, so beautifully demonstrate to us today. So fear itself is not actually a bad thing. Now, I don't want to say it is because it isn't. It's not something that we want to take out of our uh, programming. It's a really important element. It comes from when we first um, uh, became human uh, we brought it over from our, our earlier days. It's what protects us. It's what keeps us safe. It alerts us to potential danger. So we do need it. But we've been mostly conditioned to allow that fear to take over and drive us. And that's what we don't want. We want the early warning system, but then we don't want to just like live in it and, and leave our base chakra upside down. Uh, then we're letting fear guide us and rule us and it's like putting the wrong fuel in your car's gas tank. You know, it doesn't run very good. It's not good for the car and you won't get where you want to go. So that's when you let fear run your life, that's what happens. I'm sure you've experienced it. I have too. So I'll just um, tell you briefly my own story. I, I was uh, just out a year out of law school and in my early 20s and young and hard charging. And I was going to take the corporate world by storm, I thought. Uh, and I woke up with cancer. And I was like, well, that wasn't part of my planning, my programming. So I stepped off my life for a moment and looked at myself, which wasn't fashionable back then, a million years ago. One didn't look at oneself. And I was like, ooh, kind of disturbing. Looks like um, you have a lot of things you don't want to think about, Deborah, and you're coping 
uh, with your your things you're not thinking about with alcohol and and um, prescription drugs and you know the things that were popular in the day. So I st stayed off the treadmill long enough to stumble on first meditation, became an avid daily meditator, uh, as I would urge you to be, uh, hopefully with a mantra uh, that's been selected for you by a teacher, because that will most drop you out of all this chaos and pandemonium that we're all sensing out there in the universe, okay? And then the next thing I did was I stumbled, again, I'm sure uh, very serendipitously, on energy healing, where I now spent some, you know, almost 40 years uh, studying and teaching it. It's an amazing field, and uh, it really uh, centers in on some ba basic primal emotions like fear. So when you get right down to the bottom of it, there's two emotions, really. There's just love and fear. It's like one or the other. And we have created a shadow relationship with fear, especially in recent months. We, we really have. And, um, you know, we tell ourselves, you may be telling yourself, for example, well, I can watch 45 minutes of news in the morning and a half hour at night, uh, but I'm going to think positive. Well, that's pretty hard to do because you've just, through visually, through your, your eyes and auditorially through your ears, you've just taken in <laughs> what the media delivers, which is pretty fear inspiring, isn't it? Uh, into your emotional body, your energy field. So your energy field has many layers and one of them is your emotions. And so there are all of those stories you just heard on the news sit. Uh, and you try to rise above it and think positive. It doesn't work too good, right? We try to float above the fear or ignore the fear or uh, what I learned to do as a child, repress it. And uh, it's still there. And what we need to do is transform it. That's what we'll be doing in just a few minutes. So you know, with everything that's going on, whether you're in the U.S. or you're international, this is a, a time of major upheaval. This pandemic actually is a great gift to us from uh, the gods, from, from spirit, from nature. It's forcing us to change, right? It's making each of us individually do things we'd swear we'd never do, like <laughs> I cut my own hair <laughs> just yesterday. Never considered doing that in my entire life. Uh, I bet you haven't either. It was uh, quite an experience. And um, I had no idea it took so long, but um, it's just one new change after another, isn't it? It's revolutionary, it's exciting. These are times this, this uh, pandemic has brought us right to the edge of such an exciting time where changes that we wanna make for ourselves that we've been contemplating, now all of a sudden we kind of have to, um, whether it's, created more time in your life for yourself. I, I have a lot of students who tell me they get to sleep more now because they don't have to get up and go to work. Um, maybe it's brought you to the edge of the precipice financially. So you've really had to face the fact that you've been always kind of, let's admit it, living <laughs> pretty close to the edge. And so there wasn't much of a gap between uh, you and the edge when, uh, when, um, um, when this all came down. So, Lots of circumstances creating fear right now, right? It's like we're all walking blindfolded towards some cliff. Uh, what a wonderful time to finally wrap our heads around our racial imbalance and injustice in the US. Really, it's, it's here. And I, I love the fact that so many of our, of our friends around the world, especially in Europe, are, are supporting us and, and, and joining us in that effort. But we're the ones with the slave heritage. So we're the ones that have this huge body of work to uh, think through, undo and reframe. But what an opportunity. It's just like, it's such 2020, it's going to be the most exciting year of our lives. It really is. So let me just talk about economic uncertainty for a minute, because I know a lot of you are dealing with that. And there's there's nothing wrong with being concerned about the fact that right now you may have been laid off. You might not have a job opportunity, you know, that appears to be in the future. Um, face it. Don't don't try to repress it, ignore it, or band-aid it. Uh, because when we deny a reality, what we do is we create a block. So financially, what that would do is it would create a block toward receiving. 
And what you want to do is receive, right? The next job opportunity, the next career opportunity, the next uh, opportunity, perhaps a gift is coming your way. You don't want to miss that, right? So don't, uh, don't ever let fear just stagnate. Acknowledge it and transform it. That's always the ticket, is bring it in, face it, work your way through it. There's so many ways to do that energetically. Again, I promise you, we'll do one here in a minute. So feelings of anxiety and uh, being on the edge, um, wh what we do then is we project, right? We, we blame the, the next thing that crosses our horizon, the next phone call we get, you know, your mother sends you an email, whatever the next thing is. We tend to project our unease and, and uh, inner chaos. We project it out on something that's maybe pretty harmless. Um, that's what we do with anxiety. So all of this creates an imbalance in our energy system and can lead to ultimately health challenges. Now, mine came in my early 20s. I had a, <laughs> I must have been really, really anxious, okay? And I, I know I was. In fact, I remember when I learned to meditate from a teacher like myself, I had a teacher teach me in person. Uh, I ran into him. I went a year later. I decided I wanted to learn to teach. And so I went to school where I ran into him. And uh, he said to me, um, you know, now I was a colleague and not uh, his, his client. He confined, confided in me that, you know, when I taught you, Deborah, um, it was pretty weird. I would peek at you, you know, I had my eyes closed, of course, and then I would just peek to see how you were and your whole body would be shaking. And he said, I, I, I went back and I called headquarters and I said, what does, this, what does this mean with this, you know, young girl? What's this mean? And they said, you know, we're seeing it a lot in Vietnam vets that are coming home. It's PTSD. That was really interesting to me. That's the first time I knew I had PTSD. I'd, I'd had it since childhood and was um, unaware of it. So you don't want to harbor that stuff in your field. You want to address it and get it out. With that said, I wouldn't want you to think you ever need to uncover uh, and get into contact with something you repressed as a child. That's a whole different scene that you need to leave where it is and instead deal with how you feel emotionally today. We'll transform that. There's no need to uh, try to see something that your childhood psyche knew better and uh, has made invisible to you. It's very important that, um, that that be the way you treat yourself because to do otherwise, uh, you, you could really uh, hurt your psyche. Your psyche knows what's best for you. It really does. So we are a microcosm right now, each one of us, of what's happening out in the world. We are a mirror of what's happening in the world. The world is mirroring it back to us. That's why this year, this 2020, is so vibrant with possibility for you individually and for us as a species. Maybe this is the change. This is the day that will change and the year that will change our environmental problems and our societal issues. I mean, these are key issues that the, the pandemic and the protests are bringing to us. This is, these are amazing opportunities. So now we've talked about fear. What do you do about it when it's in you? You're listening to me and you're saying, shoot, you know, I am taking in a lot. I do feel fearful. I am not as resting as well, or I am more anxious than I used to be, or I just have that kind of feeling where I don't feel really like I'm safely sitting on the earth. I feel, you know, kind of hyped up and amped up, like I've had, you know, like too much caffeine, you know, kind of that feeling. Uh, so the, the first key is to bring your focus back to you. Interesting, huh? Not outside yourself, not going to go heal your relative or your, or your client or your community or the, or the earth. You're going to first focus on you. You have to heal yourself first. And I want you to just bring your focus gently back to you, just like you're boarded a plane and you heard the, you heard the, the um, um, personnel say, do you put your mask on first? You know, if something goes wrong, you have to put your oxygen mask on first. Same thing here. Absolutely the same thing. We're healing at a much deeper level than that, of course, but that's where you start. So you're bringing that healing awareness to yourself. And as you do that, and as you start to balance, just listening to my voice, you will automatically start to rebalance here. 
because I am putting you now under my template of balanced energy, you're already starting to send out a little ripple effect to everyone around you. You know, you might look to the right and look to the left, and there's people, if they're not uh, in your home environment uh, or whatever room or uh, maybe you're sitting in your car, you could be anywhere. They're, they're out there. They're not very far away. And you're sending a ripple effect out of balanced, grounded, connected to Mother Earth energy. So it's just a gentle ripple, and you become part of the solution, no longer part of the problem. So if you're like me, you can't resist finding out the news in the morning. Let's just calm that energy and take it out of ourselves. Just using our intentionality, we just push the news out of ourselves and instead bring in Mother Earth energy. Just feel it. You don't feel disrupted. You don't feel disrupted now by other people, by the energy from the media, the energy that's spinning out in the air around you because now you're connecting to the earth. And disruptions that we've noticed of recent in the earth, there was an earthquake here where I, I am in California just recently. There's um, tropical storms, there's some, been some wildfires, you name it. The earth is trying to communicate to us to help us rebalance. She's rebalancing herself. And she's releasing energy as she does that. So there's interconnectedness between us and her and our energetic wiring. And the wiring of society is all connected. We're all in this together. It's interesting how the media has started saying that. I love that. Uh, that they're now uh, quoting us. It's, it's kind of interesting. So again, the earth itself has a base chakra. You may know, by the way, that uh, American Indians would tell us that it's rooted at Mount Shasta, a mountain, one of the volcanic uh, mountains in California. I'll uh, reminisce and tell you that I skied off the top of it. It's quite a climb, by the way, but I skied off the top of it on my honeymoon, the day after I got married, um, and then went on up the chain of volcanoes, on up to um, um, the one outside Seattle and uh, continued uh, that insanity. Uh, but yeah, the, the Earth uh, base chakra is located um, in the realm of Mount Shasta, and you can feel the vibe when you're there. There's, when you get to the top, it's, a, it's, a, you know, it's over 14,000 feet, as I recall, and when you get to the top, um, you go into this little cave. I remember being pretty short of breath up there, and I think I'm pretty hard. I'd like to jump on my skis and start down. Uh, but when you go into that cave, it's really eerie. You can feel the spirits and the guides, they're in there, and they're most likely from Atlantis. Um, I won't, I'd love to tell you more about Mount Shasta. If you want to take a journey to Mount Shasta, go over to my YouTube channel. I, I have one there, and I'll guide you right to the top and back down on Mount Shasta. It's pretty fun. But back to Mother Earth. So that's where her base chakra is, and just tune into her right now and picture, just close your eyes for just a moment, and picture Mount Shasta. It's beautiful and it's always snow covered year round. Um, so you want to go there in July. It's, it's probably the safest time to go. And uh, big snow fields and just picture her chakra in the center of the earth directly below Mount Shasta. So back to fear. As I mentioned early on, fear is necessary. We need it, right? Fear is what keeps you looking uh, left and right before you cross the street. You don't want to get run over. Uh, you you don't step too close to a cliff because of natural fear of heights. I took a hike yesterday, and I, I was very careful walking through deep grass, fear of snakes. So, you know, our ancestors, they used fright as their early warning system to protect them from all these things. And our brain is continuing somewhat incorrectly to use this uh, to shield us from harm inappropriately like when we listen to the news. So every day if you hear that rising COVID number and you see it blaring at you from the television screen, it's going into your base chakra. What I would encourage is 
compress your news into five minutes on Google every morning and then watch something like a rerun of, of Reverend Temple here, maybe one of her one of her uh, most recent Sundays that maybe you were traveling or something, and that'll fill you with good a good bass chakra vibration. Uh, good, uh, they had they had great music this morning that's really good for your bass chakra because it has it has bass, it has drums, you know, and that's the that, that's what the bass chakra responds to. So we don't want to live in fear all day. We want to respond to it, and we don't want to store it. We want to have a response and an action, a safety action response. So um, when we absorb it and hold it, we hold it in the base. We're not a good place, okay? Um, uh, down there and below your spine, where uh, oddly enough, because it's way down there, severely impacts our adrenals and uh, fight or flight, right? So if you're living in fight or flight, like I did as a child, you wear yourself out. Your Adrenals just, oh, you know. Um, I met a Chinese medical doctor the year I was 20. He didn't speak much English. I was very uh, taken with him. He'd just come from a monastery in China and he felt your skin and then he told you what he discerned. And he said to me, I don't know the name of this in English, but there's glands at the base of your kidney and yours are way too big. They should be small and yours are very enlarged and you need to do something about that. I said, like what? And he said, Tai Chi. I thought, oh, okay, I get it, I get it. So I went and looked it up you know, to see, well, I didn't know the, that's the adrenal glands. So again, your, your base chakra is your, your powerhouse of connecting you to the earth. And the things that throw it are pandemics, uh, or you personally having a surgery, a car accident, uh, a shocking event in your life, like your partner walks in with uh, uh, the news that he or she's leaving, that kind of thing just throws your base. Um, if you had a childhood surgery, you might still be dealing with trying to really ground yourself. Childhood surgeries are, are, are pretty tricky to uh, recover from. If you had one, I would encourage you to do a lot of grounding things like Tai Chi, for example. Um, fear of the virus, it's very ungrounding isn't it? Or fear of a personal illness for yourself in addition to it. Maybe you feel like, oh my God, I have that underlying condition, you know, that we keep hearing about on the news. And who doesn't? <laughs> I mean, anybody over 30 not have an underlying condition, uh, my hat's off to them because uh, the rest of us do. And then there's the, you know, the, uh, the global calamity with pr police brutality, uh, much worse in the U.S. than anywhere else because we're the ones that had um, uh, early police forces that policed runaway slaves. That's where our, sad to say, but that's where our original police came from. And that's, that explains the behavior, by the way, which we must have, uh, must feel responsible for and have, uh, and have it quashed. It can't go on. It cannot go on. So, in just a minute here, I'm going to lead you through um, an affirmation um, that will also help you. Let's do that now. So before I get to the exercise, I'm going to tell you a couple things you can do. One is affirmations. As long as you're taking in an affirmation every morning from the news that, oh, my God, we're now at X number of COVID deaths or cases, or you're saying to yourself affirmations like, the world is insane, or I'll never get another job, or the virus is rampant, it's worse, it's going to be worse next month. We need to have some positive affirmations. They do work. They do work. Just like the ones I just mentioned work on us. So after you've heard all of that, you need to say, I am safe. I am secure. I belong here, right here on Mother Earth. Let's all say that together right now. I am safe. I am secure. I'm, I belong here. I'm deeply rooted to Mother Earth. Let's say it one more time. I am safe. I am secure. I am deeply rooted here to Mother Earth. Feel the vibration of that. Just let it just fill all the cells of your body and fill your mind. So repeat that one throughout the day. Every time you get ungrounded by another piece of news that a friend tells you, uh, or that you read or hear, 
Repeat that affirmation. I am safe. I am secure. I am deeply rooted to Mother Earth. Just um, reverse the negativity. You're transforming it. This is, you're not, you're not band-aiding it or repressing it. You are transforming it. You're using your own personal energy field, and you're sending out a ripple effect to your friends, your family, your neighbors, and the whole world, the whole world. Now, here's another tip. You can play with color. Just like I saw the, um, the music team doing here uh, at First Unity, I was very taken with that. She played with the color of the, of the um, um, what do you call those things that she was throwing around? Aren't they beautiful? I want a set of those. That looked like a lot of fun. Um, but the color of your base chakra is red. And so use some red. You could have a red lampshade. You could have a red blanket. You could paint your living room red. You could paint your fingernails red. You could put rose petals in your bath water. You could... Hey, you got a yellow tea kettle? Send away for a red one. Um, the important thing is to work consciously with the red items you're choosing. Consciously saying, I'm doing this to support and sustain my base chakra. That's why I like this red sweater. That's why I like this red book cover. Just, you know, Be conscious of it. Another tip would be to eat uh, healing uh, base chakra foods, you know, and as you might expect, a lot of them are red. They're all about grounding you into Mother Earth. But in fact, any root vegetable that grows in the ground uh, will really help you. You could, for example, you could roast uh, beets and rutabagas, and aren't they very beautiful yellow color, and put potatoes and garlic and um, turnips, um, onions, anything that grows in the ground, you know, you could sprinkle them with salt and olive oil and roast them up. Um, if you like to eat a little meat, and it's very grounding, by the way, I'm, I have nothing against it. Uh, remember, each person's body's different. It's what's right for you that matters. There is no generic right for everyone diet. I teach Ayurveda, which is very personal to you. That's the East Indian ancient 5,000 year old healing uh, preventative medicine program, and it's all about you personally. And I need to know what day you're asking me what to eat because you have to eat with the seasons. So it's, uh, it's June. Uh, you'd be less likely to be eating a lot of red meat right now. That would be more like November, December, January, February. But you might have bone broth. Bone broth would be very grounding and nourishing for your base chakra. And then grains like oats or maybe mineral drops from the Great Salt Lake or I had raspberries this morning, red as could be, and, and uh, strawberries. Or how about paprika, another red food you could sprinkle. So you can send nourishing energy to your base chakra by eating consciously. Mean what you eat, you know. Tell yourself, I'm eating this particular food to support my base chakra. Your energy field that you're sitting inside of hears your thoughts and emotions. It's actually the source of them, a little hard to explain. Uh, we feel like, you know, like we're thinking and that, you know, we're having the emotion, but in fact, our emotions are what powers our chakras. Pretty interesting. So the more you do that and the more you repeat that connected to the earth affirmation, the more you'll, you are clearing, charging, and balancing your base chakra. You can do it yourself. You can absolutely do it yourself. But let's do it together right now, okay? So, again, we're all a little ungrounded, more than normal, because we're feeling all of the other people on the planet who aren't perhaps uh, as lucky as you, have the consciousness level you have to know what they need to do. And so we'll do it for them, right? We will ground ourselves. We will remove the fear from our energy field that we took into process like we should. Now we're sending it back out and letting it just transform itself and disappear up in the sky. That's what happens to it. So close your eyes for a moment here. And you can keep your hands on your knees. That's very grounding, by the way. Connects your upper body to your lower body. Have your hands on your knees. And take your focus right to your base chakra. Again, it's right at the base of your spine. And 
I want you to imagine, to, to visualize, a red cord running from that spinning vortex of energy. It's, picture it spinning, picture it red. Take a red cord and drive it with your intentionality, and I'll guide you, straight down from your base chakra, down through the floor, down through the ground, and right down to the center of the earth. Right to the core, vibrant, molten, red, lava core. Beautiful. Beautiful. I can feel all of that. Great. So, while we're here at the Earth's core, feel her chakra spinning and radiating and enlarging in size. We're healing her chakra right now. We're using our combined energy, and we're all combined here. We're, Reverend Temple did that already. She masterfully combined everyone's energy on this, on this call this morning. Just feel how we're all connected. Our base chakras are open, vibrant, spinning, and healthy as can be. And we're pushing that energy down to Mother Earth. And she is, uh, she's picking up from our energy. And now her chakra is spinning the correct direction and spinning in a bigger and bigger way. Watch it spin as it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Mother Earth's base chakra, and now intend to pull her vibrant, strong, volcanic, red energy back up that cord, using your intentionality, pull it right up that red cord that you formed energetically, right up through the core of the earth and right up into your base chakra. Beautiful. Just breathe into that. You are the resource. She is the resource. She has the capacity to hold us and nourish us. And we have the capacity to hold and nourish ourselves. And now that you have this vibrant strength, this huge core of energy, now let's send it out to the rest of the world, just out through our hands. Just intend for it to leave your center. It comes up through your core and into your heart and goes right out your arms. Just see it going right out your hands. Just intend for it to go wherever it's needed, maybe right in your own little community, maybe to your neighbors, maybe your village, maybe you're in a city, maybe you're the whole building you're in if you're in a high rise. Just send it out. Beautiful. Look how well your energy system is working this morning. Isn't this great? Now visualize your base chakra as a flower. Yeah, it could be a lotus, any flower you like. Make it red and then watch it bloom. Just intend for it to bloom bigger and bigger and bigger. And notice how it spins and stabilizes and radiates. And You're in the vibration and your vibration is rising as you really ground your base chakra. Beautiful. God, you guys are so gifted at this. Now bring your hands from your knees up to your heart chakra, right in the center of your chest. And feel that smile that just wants to happen to you. Go ahead and smile. And open your eyes. Great, great. I want you to feel how rooted you feel and how secure you are in your birthright. Yes, the world. The world is your birthright. You personally, the world is your birthright. So remember how natural it feels for your base chakra to feel this way. Feel it open and spinning and expanding in size. Always want it open. It doesn't have to pull up. It can just stay down there no matter what happens. And go ahead and feel the fear that's in you on a daily basis and then just clear it just as we have done together. It's that simple. So you'll get so much joy and vitality and health. And of course, the base chakra is your fountain of health. It's what connects you to the earth, and the earth is what keeps us all healthy. And I want you to feel really, really, really secure and safe. All right. Great being with you. Thank you, Temple, for having me.